Hey guys, this is your host Sipiwa. I'm back here with the second part of this tutorial where we take a look at creating a Pokemon index. I did create a first video where I explained what this application is going to be and what it's going to do. If you haven't seen that, there's a link right here on the top right corner that links to that video, which you can click. It's just an introduction video to this tutorial. In the second part, we'll quickly go over the HTML, go over the CSS, and then we'll dive into the JavaScript of this application application and what it does so let's quickly have a look at the html so as usual i have my css over here that i am using for my custom css i have my bootstrap css i'm using and then i have my font awesome over here as well um that i'm using for that search icon over there okay and then I have my main div, which is my container div, which is my H2, which is the title of this application, if you can call it that. Um, just a small text over there is your Pokemon and our codex. And then I have my input and my button over here that searches for the Pokemon by name if you fill it in. So if you search for a Pokemon that doesn't exist, let's see if I'm a Pokemon, let's say Yohan, which is my second name. If I search for Yohan, you'll say, how weird, we don't know that Pokemon. So luckily for me, I'm not a Pokemon. Um, quickly going further with this HTML over here, I have this alert that you guys see over here, which is this div over here with an ID says show error. We'll see in the JavaScript where we need all of that in order to make it work. And then I go down and I create this Pokemon card div over here, which is the Pokemon details, which is just this entire section here at the bottom, including the image as well. So on default, I have an image that I stripped out from the API that I'm using, which is actually a Pikachu image. Um, that's the one I'm using by default. So what I usually do is when you design a layout of an application or a UI, it's best to use hard-coded values so that you can see how stuff are aligned and how they look. And then you'll just use the JavaScript um, just to replace that information. Okay, so currently I'm using hard coded values like the name, the HP, the XP over here. Um, so the XP over here, which was just laid out nicely over here, so I can see the look and feel. And if you guys do play Pokemon Go on your mobile, you guys will see that this transfer button looks very familiar, which is just a button that you can use to transfer your Pokemon to the professor and get some candy or something for that Pokemon. Okay, so that's the look and feel I was going for for this application. And then going down in the HTML, we have this what type, the type of Pokemon it is, um, the weight of the Pokemon, the height of the Pokemon, and also the stardust you as a player currently have, and also the candy you as the player currently have for that specific Pokemon. Okay. So that is the HTML um, that we currently have over there. Let's go to the CSS. So scrolling back up, way back up in our CSS, I have our image over here, my image tag, which is what I just set to 80% and I gave it a padding of 60% all around. Because the images are not the same size um, that you get back from the API. So that was just a safe zone that I found works nicely in order to set the image size to 80%. And then I have this class called hidden over here, which is opacity zero and display none. Um, the reason for that is if I go over here and search for a Pokemon that actually does exist, um, let's search for, let's say Charmander. Let's search for Charmander. So if I search for Pokemon, you guys see that that, um, that notification here, disappeared so usually without this hidden class over here it would leave a space for that alert button or for that alert that you guys it leave a space there but if i set the opacity to zero and display none that space is not there and that's why you have this like this jumping effect when you see a when you see that the arrow notification over there so that guy takes care of that i have my search container which is display flex with a margin of 10 and worth of 80 percent my input focus the reason i needed to override that is because i'm using bootstrap and bootstrap had its own class on my input so i'm just using this to override the bootstrap classes over there and then I have my button search, which is that button over there that I styled. Um, anything else I need to bring to your attention is 
you guys can see over here i actually left the left this over here so that you guys can see that sometimes you do style stuff and then as you go along with the project you realize nope it's not needed so in a live project i would delete or remove this entire co um, commented out um, css because it's not being used and it just takes out space makes my file larger unnecessary so i would remove it but i left it here so you guys can see that sometimes when you style or when you code there is some code that you initially have that at the end of the project you kind of realize okay this is redundant or i don't need this type of code let me just remove it or comment it out but removing it is the best way to go okay so that is my css over here oh, i'm not quite sure if there's anything else i need to just um, explain I have my attributes container over here and this is my attributes right here at the bottom um, my CP text has a padding it has a border um, one pixel right which is I'm using this CP um, text class I'm using it on that dove over there to, to have that faint um dev over there that border you guys see the light border and that border over there so I'm using this class to get that going and I'm just using this last child class not to have a border at the end of this one. So I don't, I don't want it border to be here and that border to be on that side. So I'm using that last class um, pseudocode over there to, to remove the border. And then I have my player data, which is also display flex, which is just the section over here. This is my player data, the stardust, and also the candy that I currently have. Um, yeah, I think that's it for my CSS um there's nothing else i want to explain to you guys let's head on over to the javascript okay so the javascript already removed most of the code that um takes care of this functionality uh what i'm gonna do for the rest of this video i'm just gonna leave um this pokemon over here that i think is gonna look um awesome while we going through this video so it is um Charizard. let's leave this guy over here yeah i think charizard looks bad ass so this is going to be something to look at while we're coding up the javascript for this project okay with no longer ado let's get straight into the javascript so the two things i do know i need from the get-go from this application is this button because i need to add an event listener to this button when someone clicks it and i also need this um inbox over here because i'm going to need the value of this inbox over here so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to say const um search i'm just going to call it search term and then my search terms equal to document dot get element by id and that element i called it search on a queue for query and then the next one i'm going to say const search underscore btn for button is also going to be a document dot get element by id and i call them my search dash btn so it's my search button okay so the next thing that i know that i want to do is hook up the api um to make sure that i get what i need from the api which is the information about that specific pokemon that's being searched i'm going to create a function and i'm going to say i'm going to call this one get pokemon data which is going to be an async function because i wanted to wait for the response of this um query of this get um, that i'm going to be sent out so i wanted to wait uh before i do anything else i'm gonna say async and then i'm gonna put in a term over there so my term is going to be my param that i'm going to pass through okay so if this is confusing what i'm doing here is exactly the same as going ahead and putting this and like that so you usually have it like this with the async to tell that this function is asynchronous but because i'm just using one param i can actually do it like this and javascript allows that as well okay so um what i do have currently i'm just gonna say const url which is going to be my url for my my url for my api that i'm going to use okay so i'm say http HTTPS and then my URL is poke API just for probably short for Pokemon API dot co forward slash API forward slash v2 forward slash 
Pokemon. Okay, so this is my this is my URL that I currently have, and I think we can test this quickly by just copying it, going to the browser and say paste. Let's say enter, see if it works. So you'll see Firefox uh, um, automatically pick up JSON response, and then it lays it out like this. So my URL works fine. So what happens is if you don't pass in any term or any query, um, what it will do is let me just change this to make it query so it makes more sense. Okay, so if we don't pass through any query, it will return um the first twenty, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the first twenty pro um Pokemon's um for you to use in your array or whatever you want to use it in. Okay, but if you do pass through a query, it will search for that specific Pokemon. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over here, and I'm gonna pass through dollar because i'm saying the, the following thing is going to be actually javascript um so i'm going to say query we then we'll pick this up as a a variable if i can put it that way so whatever's being passed through i'm going to pass it through over here as a query and then i'm not instead of returning everything for me or 20 pro um pokemons returned pokemons data specific to the query that i've passed through okay let's go back to this charles i just stared it as he stares back at me and I'm just going to stare back at him. Wow, he's awesome. Okay, let's carry on with this one. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just say, okay, const um, response, which is the response that I'm going to get from that. I'm just going to say, wait, which I'm going to use is the fetch. I'm using the fetch API to fetch it. I'm passing through the URL. So the URL I'm passing through is this guy, and I'm using async await on this. So wait um, for the response before continuing with anything else in this um, application. And then what I want to do is I want to check for any errors that I get. Okay. So first thing first, I'm going to say if uh, my response dot status. So if my response dot status is equal to four four, meaning that nothing was found. Or I can just check for my response dot status text if that is equal to not found meaning that the, the product or whatever I search for it's not found then do the following for me okay so over here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna want to show that alert you guys saw earlier so in this if statement I'm gonna show that alert that says um, how weird that Pokemon is not in our index or a database or a codex um, that what that's what I want to show in this if statement and then let's just carry on and then just say or maybe let me just finish up this if statement as well yeah let me just do this if statement and then we'll continue so what I want to do is I'm gonna say document dot get element by ID uh, sorry about that get element by ID and the element I'm getting by ID I called it show underscore error and I'm gonna add a class and it's a class list dot add this class in this class is called show um, so if you guys do use a bootstrap alert you guys will see there's a little class next to fade which says show and that's the class that actually shows the alert because it's part of bootstrap so that's the class i'm adding to the alert okay so it's not a class that i've created but it's a bootstrap class and the one i'm going to be removing i'm going to say document dot get element by id which is the same one which is show alert show underscore error and I'm gonna say dot classless dot remove and the one I'm removing is the one I created which is called hidden okay so this is the class that I've created so I'm just removing it and I'm adding the show one to show the alert and I'm saying return nothing so because I don't want this app to do anything further than this if this shows then the app must just stop here nothing else must happen so that's why I'm entering this return blank okay so I'm breaking out of this entire function if I if I can call it that Okay, so that is my if statement. So the next thing that I'm going to do is say, okay, if my response wasn't a 404 or a not found, I'm gonna say create a const, um, a variable called Pokemon, which is the Pokemon data, which will then will say response dot JSON. And just format that into JSON format for me. Save it into this variable called Pokemon. 
okay and then what i'm going to do is with that variable called pokemon i'm going to update all of the fields that i know needs updating it's going to be the image um the hp the xp the title of the pokemon the name of the pokemon um the type of the pokemon its weight its height um all of this information i'm going to get from this api or from this variable called pokemon over here okay now let's go ahead and start doing that just a couple of stuff that we're going to document that get at the moment um the reason why i've done this i'm not uh, i think this this will help if i explain like this the reason why i didn't go ahead and declare all of this document and get element before this function right here on top is because when the page loads right it reads from top to bottom okay and then it will get over here to this section and it will jump to this file and then in this file it will read this it will read this okay and then it will go ahead if it comes to this document get element by uh, by id and it finds that id is going to jump back to the html go find um that element it's going to come back store it do the same for the search button go to that side come back store it okay but i don't want it to go find all of this other elements on initial load because that's unnecessary i only wanted to go find them once this function gets called okay so it will read all of this do this part then come here read through everything over here nothing will execute because this function is not being called and then it the document will load so the page load um will be slightly faster if you do your documents that load inside of a function if you know you're only going to call them once so for instance you're not i'm, I'm not going to use this title dev over here that i'm calling now i'm not going to use it anywhere else in this um application where i'm going to want to manipulate it or change it again i'm just going to use it inside this one function okay i hope that makes sense okay let's continue with this so i'm gonna say update i call it actually update image so update image dot set its attribute so i'm setting a new attribute and the attribute i'm setting is source and then the source will come from pokemon which is this response over here it's gonna say pokemon dot sprite um, dot other dot dream underscore world dot let's say it's called front default okay so i have pokemon dot sprites dot other um dot dream world dot front so where am i getting all of this from if we go back to this api we can quickly check it um, if I go ahead and then right there in front, let's call mu. So I'm passing through a variable. So I'm saying all of this is being returned. So this is this variable called Pokemon. Then I'm looking for the one called Sprite in this response. So I'm going to go down to Sprites. There's my Sprites. And it's saying other. I'm going to go down to other. Um, Dream World. So there's Dream World and then front default. There's my so front default is this SVG and this is the one I'm using to show the images. Okay, so that's where I'm getting all of that from to do the image. Okay, so that's my image. The next thing I'm gonna do the title or the name of the Pokemon. So I'm gonna say document dot get element by ID. I'm gonna say update underscore name. Okay, which is the name and this i can just go ahead and say inner html is equal to pokemon dot name okay if you guys want to see where i'm getting that from the pokemon dot name should be outside over here there's it so i'm calling that one over there so it's pokemon dot name and now let's do the candy title let's say document dot get element by id and I call this one update. Sorry about that. I need to add quotation marks, single quotation marks, update underscore candy underscore title. And this is also going to be a dot inner HTML equal to going to use backticks on this one because I want to say candy. Okay. So the one I am doing over here actually is 
this one over here because I want the name of the Pokemon to display and to say I have so much candy for this Pokemon you understand instead of adding it hard coded as just one six one candy but must be specific to that specific Pokemon okay so over here I can also say dollar so what dollar is going to say because the following thing is a variable which is Pokemon or treated as JavaScript and not just a string a Pokemon dot name so it's the same as this one over here and then I'm gonna have Charizard and over here I'm gonna have Charizard candy okay I hope you guys are still with me let's do another one document I think by this time you guys know um, which direction this whole thing is going if you want to pause the video and just see if you can do it on your own um, I definitely recommend that pause the video and just see if you can complete the rest of this tutorial um, without following along um, and then hit me up in the comments show me what you've done send me a link to your github repo so that I can take a look at how far you guys have taken um, this tutorials and what you have done with it okay so over here I'm gonna put in a variable I'm gonna say math okay so math.floor so what I'm doing is yeah, I'm, I'm creating a random number um, because I'm using an update HP so my update HP is gonna be uh, a random number for this and then that is the maximum of the of, of the HP that this Pokemon might have okay so I don't want to have say 78 by 78 which is maxed out just want to have a random number that's between 1 and 78 and that's how much your pokemon currently strength is of its hp is okay let's quickly do that so i'm saying math.floor then inside this one i'm also going to have another one say math.floor times pokemon which is pokemon dot stats um position zero because it's an array um dot base underscore stats okay so where am i seeing this i'm going to show you now quickly where am i seeing this so if we go back over here what i'm saying is pokemon's dot stats which is the stats of that pokemon in position zero which is the base stats you see and i'm taking that guy over there which is the value that the base stats give me of that pokemon if you guys go over the stats over here you'll see it's actually the hp stats of that pokemon which is what we currently have the hp stats of that specific pokemon okay guys let's continue with this so we've done the image we've done the title we've done the candy title we've done hp now we need to do xp type weight height and stardust okay let's go ahead and do this so document get element by id now our next one is cp update cp dot you know html so it would be great if you guys actually can go ahead and enter some um animation to this that will actually show that it's currently busy loading or any stuff like that so when someone actually search for pokemon and you click on that search button you show a little spinner to show that okay we are fetching this pokemon we are looking at the database if this pokemon does exist um and if not you return them that error so that's that's the kind of stuff that i'd actually love to see you guys do with this um applications that i do in this channel uh see how you guys take it further and what 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 creativity you guys come up with to make this applications more user friendly if i can put it that way because at the moment what it's doing is if i fill in quickly over here and say mu2 i click this button nothing you see um if if your internet is slow i wouldn't know if the click of the button worked or it didn't work or what's happening you're with me but with a little spinner with a little loader it actually indicates that okay it's busy doing something in the background i must just be patient a little bit it will return some results to me okay so update the next one we're doing is we're updating the type so i'm saying update type dot you know html so the type is going to be back tick a dollar which is going to be pokemon 
dot types which is also an array types at position zero dot the type of the pokemon dot name okay and then we're gonna do the following i'm just gonna copy that because i'm gonna use the same thing but i'm just gonna paste it here which is because there's two types of this pokemon um it's a fire and flying so i want both of them and the other one's just going to be at position um two which is actually array position one okay so this what i've done here is this two is the fire and the flying this is what i'm doing over here um next thing up so document dot get element by id i've done the types i'm going to do the weight so I'm going to call it update underscore weight dot inner HTML. And my weight that I'm going to do is also just backticks dollar sign curly braces Pokemon dot weight. Okay. And KG here at the back end. Now I'll say document dot get element by id next to weight i'm gonna do the height um single because i've been doing single all the time dot height dot inner html and then i'm gonna say height i'm also gonna do this back tick so dollar curly braces pokemon dot height m for meters and the next one I'm going to do is my stardust. So I can just say document dot get element by ID. I'm just also going to call it, or it's also called underscore stardust. Okay, dot in HTML is equal to backticks. Um, or actually, I don't need backticks for this one. I'm just going to do a math dot floor because I want. Uh, my stardust always to be a random. I just want it to be a random number. Okay, so my stardust is going to be a random number. Say math dot floor times. Sorry, I need that times two hundred because I want it to be. Um, I want it actually. I'm missing something. No, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see um stardust is actually 1000 and i'm supposed to have two curly braces yeah math.floor i actually want this to be 10,000 10,000 and then this one positive numbers only close it so over here i'm saying generate a random number times it by 10,000 um always positive and that's why i get my 2789 stardust over there you guys see i'm using this math to generate random numbers and i'm gonna do the same thing quickly um for my mewtwo or for my candy for my pokemon but that's just going to be kept to 100 so i can actually just go ahead and duplicate this and i'm going to change this to instead of say stardust i'm going to say update candy and then my candy is going to be the same the only difference is this is going to be 200 because no one playing this application has candy which is more than 200 maybe i should just change it to 500 500 is the maximum candies that you can have um when you play this game and the next thing that i want to do is just add an event listener to that search button so add event listener the event i'm listening for is a click event and once someone click this, what I want to do is run this function called get Pokemon data. And what I'm going to pass through is the search term dot value. Okay. So I'm passing through the search term dot value that I've got over there. And this should be it. So if I save this, and then if we go ahead and test this out, let's say refresh gonna go down let's start a new one okay so there i have my pikachu with all the default information one candy 500 stardust and now let's search for 
Charizard. They search. Wait for it. Okay, guys, I found my error. The issue was that because I'm using an async function over here, um, my response of my Pokemon didn't wait um, for this fetch to finish. So what it did do, it just continued with this function. And due to that, this response was not what I wanted to be. So what I needed to do over here, it just also add in the keyword await so wait for this response that we get over there first wait for it to complete and only then assign it to this variable called pokemon so if i save this now and i go back and i can just close this and i search for Char charizard there we go so we have our pokemon charizard over there looking as bad as always and i think this is the pokemon that just flew away from ash right this is the pokemon that just decided i'm done with this battle thingy so guys i hope that you do like this tutorial i hope you guys learned a lot from this tutorial um if there's any type of tutorials you guys like me to change to focus more on html focus more on css or even just continuing the javascript part but going more the basic route please let me know hit up the comments and i hope that you guys really do like this video if you haven't done something so hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, uh, so that you get notified every time I post a new video, and stay safe.